134 job positions eliminated out of a total of 400. That's 35%, and that is how many job roles are to be eliminated at Blizzard's Versailles, France office. It's hard news for the staff there, and to be honest, it's a little bit hard for me as well. Many of my personal contacts at Blizzard are in that office, and it's a tough position for them to be in, but there's also a lot more to talk about, including how this is a reflection of the amount of non-core development roles that are eliminated across the company, um, and also how Blizzard, I think, exploits passion, and that is a criticism that has been levied at them for years, and there really is a lot to talk about. So. On Tuesday, of course, we saw the mass layoffs across Activision Blizzard, with hundreds leaving the company, primarily in roles like QA, community management, esports, production, and backroom services. And since then, we really have seen the extent of this, with many teams being gutted. And over the preceding days, we have indeed seen people tweeting and just talking publicly about how they have been moved on to other projects at the company. And it does indicate a streamlining and a reassignment of human resources across Activision Blizzard. Now on the whole, while these people don't directly develop the game by producing art assets or writing code for the game, they actually do form an essential part of the development process. Testing games, directing community feedback, extremely important things that, I mean, are developer-ish, to be honest with you. So while hiring more developers is a good thing, well, at Blizzard, they've been running into serious QA issues with World of Warcraft, and they've been running into serious design issues across many of their titles, things that seem to stem from being blind to their communities. Now, they were already notoriously a bit impossible to deal with, with seemingly an institutional dislike for criticism and a love of control. I know this from working, you know, with them and from talking to other people who've worked with them and a range of other sources, it's also seemingly impossible to get much done over there with really it just leading to me wondering if there's bloated departments and bureaucracy and if that formed part of the problem. But really, I don't think this streamlining is going to solve much of that problem. Why? Well, I mean, we've already heard of a number of valuable World of Warcraft community projects that have now been scrapped because of this, including one that was focused on Battle for Azeroth's largest points of criticism, the class design. So it's a grim outlook. Blizzard reduced their headcount in areas where they were already struggling to uh, really to do a, a good job. I've also heard from some sources that some of these layoffs kind of targeted people who questioned management. Now, this is, in my view, likely the product of managers just being told to select who would stay and who would go, and therefore a bit of favoritism, and that overall it's not a top-down decision, but it does make me wonder and worry about the institutional health of the company. Now, on that, many people are blaming J. Allen Brack specifically for this, and he did have a decision to make there, and he did say it was one of the hardest he's ever made, but we must not be prone, or we must not fall to sudden and emotionally driven memory loss, because while this is news, Mike Morheim laid off over 600 staff in 2012. So being real with you, overall, I don't think the Blizzard had an overly efficient operation. I think they probably did over hire. Maybe they wanted to be better at things like community management, but they perhaps forgot something very important. You know, if you have too many people in similar roles, that's not a good thing. I'm sure you've all been to bloated meetings at work that just drag on. I'm sure you've borne witness to what happens when there's a lot of jo uh, job overlap and needless bureaucracy. Now, that's not the fault of the people affected. It is indeed the fault of the company over hiring and having poor internal structure. Now, moving on to the French situation, well, many of the people in that office who now risk being laid off, they survived the layoffs of 2012, as they, I believe, quite heavily impacted the Irish office at Cork. Now, these employees do find themselves in a rather different situation to their American counterparts because of French labor laws. Now, French labor laws are notoriously complex and very much in the favor of employees. That makes it very hard to get rid of staff, and it actually has led to an interesting debate in a modern French politics, with many politicians advocating for a simplification of those labor laws, but often really as a way of kind of smuggling in the erosion of the workers' rights. And that forms a wider part, or just a wider problem for the French um, economy. France has a notoriously stagnant economy that does not seem to be coping massively well with the modern era, having at times extended periods of sub 1% GDP growth and a really a quite high an unemployment rate, I believe being near double the American unemployment rate. Um, now, of course, part of that could be down to how it's being counted, but overall, I'd say that this is an issue to leave to the economists, but I think that from the perspective of a large multinational company, well, com uh, countries with less protective labor laws technically have a competitive advantage over those that do, meaning that those labor laws would de-incentivize uh, foreign investment in that country. And that does make me wonder if that is a part of why Blizzard is downsizing their Versailles office to such a degree. Right now, we know that 134 out of 400 job roles are being eliminated 
eliminated, but employee rumors actually do indicate that some of those roles could be transferred to The Hague and to Cork, which, I mean, I don't know about the, um, the various employment laws in, you know, those countries actually, but they maybe are weaker than the French. And for those employees right now, they're in complete limbo. They basically don't know what their fate is going to be. The French job losses will be a slow process, likely taking months as the country's labor laws are navigated. And indeed, if you look at the earnings call, Blizzard did say that the American restructuring would be quite quick, but that the worldwide one would take uh, really quite a bit longer. How is that all going to happen? Well, likely what we're going to see is voluntary redundancies, perhaps through programs like Career Crossroads, which um, of course recently saw 100 people leave Blizzard's Cork office, um, an office which so far does not seem to be hit particularly hard by the recent layoffs. Now, once that happens, uh, if not enough roles are eliminated, then yeah, it probably is just going to be, you know, redundancies, ultimately leaving us with a far smaller European presence from Blizzard. And this does bring me on to what I think is really something that's hard to talk about um, and awkward at first, but trust me, this does actually kind of go somewhere. So Activision Blizzard, they did not eliminate these job roles because they didn't or they couldn't afford them. They eliminated them because they decided that they did not want them. So when you see articles saying that they made profits but cut staff, that really isn't the full picture. They made profits, but they decided they did not want those job roles and instead wanted other ones. Uh, they're not a social enterprise and therefore they are not obligated to keep staff for the sake of it, even by the very protective French labor laws. And that brings me on to, I think, the most important topics of this video, and that is being a responsible employer and, you know, responsible growth of a company and the exploitation of passion. And I think we need to hit on the passion one first. Many of us, especially those sort of in the know through work, have been aware for years that Blizzard really exploits their staff's love of their intellectual properties through people that I know through developer Scuttlebutt uh, and things that I hear from a number of close friends at AAA Studios. Blizzard are notorious for this. First, their base pay pretty much is at the bottom of the expected bracket. They then include the value of um, quite good benefits overall when talking about compensation, but you have to remember that benefits do not buy freedom in the same way that money does. If you have low cash flow and are living in an expensive city like Irvine, California, but have great benefits, you're kind of stuck. You won't save enough to move on. You will be safe because of those benefits, but you might actually be scared to leave over the impact of losing those benefits, especially things such as healthcare. Although, of course, that is more of an American concern than it would be in quite a few other countries. Uh, but still, that's something to keep, uh, you know, keep in mind. Now, within those jobs, well, the amount of stories that I've heard of people going above and beyond the call, working 100-hour weeks, sacrificing personal health and family life for the company. I mean, at one point, I remember one community manager who's no longer with the company basically half-killing himself to get a certain project done in the run-up to Legion Beta. And you just hear a lot of things from ex-Blizzard staff. And, you know, I've... I mean, just from every channel you hear about an unhealthy company culture and how people essentially live out much of their life on campus. We then have recent waves of ex-employees speaking up about their experiences. And while these are posts made by recently ex-employees and therefore understandably, you know, quite emotional in, in some ways, I suppose, uh, they are in line with what I have heard for a long time. I think Alex's post probably highlights this the most and it's really quite... I mean, it's a bit painful to read, isn't it? What's the takeaway from all this? Well, for me, it's don't work more than 40 hours a week unless you have skin in the game, an excellent bonus structure, or a lucrative overtime uh, hour situation. Working for free out of passion makes no sense within a large organization. You'll often hear about people talking about, say, the hustle life of working massive uh, weeks. Well, look, I've worked 60 to 80, sometimes 110 hour weeks for three years straight with barely any holidays. But I do that because I own what I'm doing. If this was a regular business, I'd be out the door the second the clock hits 5 p.m. Now, I understand it's easy for me to say that because I'm in a decently desirable position, and I know that excessive crunch is often not dictated by company leadership, and rather it's dictated by runaway social obligations and the natural process of those who are seen to work the hardest getting the promotions. But still, if you're somewhere where that's the norm, I mean, it is exploitative, isn't it? In Blizzard's case, it's an exploitation of people's utter love of their intellectual property. Ultimately, though, Blizzard is a business. It's perfectly expected and normal for a business to evaluate their structure and feel like they need to make changes. Um, you know, they're not a social enterprise. 
they don't have an obligation to provide for those people past their contract. And honestly, if they did, then, I mean, it would stifle the uh, you know potential growth for the company, especially if that applied to SMBs. And that does sound harsh and super pro-business, but what does it really mean for people? I think what it means is you should come into work at nine, you should work your hours efficiently and honorable until five, and then leave. That's ideal. I mean, if a company is desperate to get something done, I am sure they can afford to hire on contract workers at near double your hourly rate with zero benefits. Looking at their numbers, Blizzard certainly can. I don't think anyone should owe the whatever company anything past their employ uh, employment contract as... I mean, yeah, with, with Blizzard, if a company is willing to dip into passion hours, it's a red flag. And really, for young me, working at Blizzard, especially with World of Warcraft, was a dream. It was a life goal. But from everything that I've heard over the years, uh, being rank and file at Blizzard just does not seem to be appealing. And that brings me on to the topic of responsible hiring, because while it is within their right to reorganize and eliminate job roles, well, it is possible that some of those roles were not needed in the first place, leading to an overbloated organization with too many people doing similar things. Now, if that is the case, then it does highlight the potential irresponsibility of overhiring. Now, to be clear, overhiring also does cost the company, and I don't expect the company to be Nostradamus, being able to perfectly know what their future needs will be, but I suppose it does serve as a warning to those operating in growth-driven industries. Much like how, say, the recent media layoffs happened at places like Vice, uh, you know, Vice and um, BuzzFeed, right? You see these companies that were overhiring because of the growth targets brought on by VC money and uh, massive overvaluations. Ultimately, the people who had those jobs are the people who have lost out, and I hope that in this video I've been able to successfully point out things from both sides, but ultimately what I, I really... Um, I mean, ultimately, my, my goal here is is to just talk about the the dangers of being loyal to a company um, at times over oneself and one's family. And I would extend this to an overbearing love of anything that could be described as intellectual property. I really think there is a danger of putting too much of oneself into those things. And I really think that, to borrow a very old analogy, it is like building one's house on sand. And that whenever it comes toppling down, like it just has with Blizzard, it's partic it stings particularly hard, and I think it's responsible to not just talk about the immediate problem of the job losses, but also just to you know talk about that, which I really think is the more foundational cultural issue that leads to things like this happening. So yeah, that's my thoughts on this topic. I know it's absolutely a hard one, but let me know what you think down in those comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.